Hey everybody, I want to do a um, brief uh, video lecture on Bowen's reaction series. You've probably seen it before in EES1, but it's very important to us now as we look at uh, binary and eventually ternary phase diagrams. So you've probably seen this part before where there are two series. Uh, the continuous series is uh, it concerns the plagioclase feldspars, and they show a bunch of steps, but it's, these are almost a little bit misleading. You can draw a single arrow here as you go from plagioclase that's calcium rich to sodium rich. So when we talk about the alkali increase towards alkali rich compositions, it's really just calcium to sodium, uh, sodium being the alkali metal in question. And when uh, the alkalis get concentrated enough, eventually we increase potassium to the point that the liquid can precipitate out potassium feldspar. Over on the discontinuous series, uh, we don't have solid solution. We have different minerals that react with an evolving liquid. So olivine starts out crystallizing, but as olivine crystallizes, the liquid becomes more silica rich. As it does so, olivine will react with that liquid to form pyroxene, a more silica rich mineral. And then pyroxenes will react with water contents that increase to the point where they can react with that water and form amphibole. Uh, biotite is even more water rich. And then they head to the same place where, where we have potassium feldspar, muscovite, and quartz forming. Now, the other things that are important for us is that uh, temperature is increasing as we go from bottom to top. That's really the reverse of the process. Usually this, it's probably better to think of this as a down temperature process where temperature, where we start up here uh, at high temperatures and we go to lower temperatures. Uh, and we can connect these to different rock types. So basalts are rocks that contain olivine and pyroxene, uh, excuse me, olivine uh, plus or minus pyroxene and plagioclase feldspar. I'm going to copy that label and in place of writing on the board, we'll try this and we'll have andesites here. Andesites are rocks that have intermediate plagioclase. They still have plagioclase, but instead of being calcium rich, they're a little more albite rich and, they're, and they have pyroxene and not so much olivine. And we'll paste again. We can have dacites that are down here. Dacites are rocks that'll now contain amphibole or biotite. They'll still have lots of feldspar. And you can imagine what comes next. Down here at the very bottom, we have rhyolites. Rhyolites are volcanic rocks that will contain uh, mostly quartz and potassium feldspar. Muscovite's actually pretty rare um, in, a, in a rhyolite, uh, but not because it's not important. Muscovite crystallizes very late and rhyolites and all volcanic rocks usually cool before there's time for all of the minerals to form. Now I'm going to get rid of this side here and as part of our notes for today. I'm going to copy all these and I'm going to paste them over on the other side. So this is the volcanic series here on the left. The intrusive series would be Gabro, Grano, excuse me, Diorite, Grano Diorite. and then true granites. So granites and rhyolites will have a similar composition, except that granites will crystallize completely. So the muscovite that forms in granites uh, is a result of there being more time for all of that ground mass interstitial material that we've seen in the lab to crystallize out completely. If that stuff were to crystallize completely, then those rhyolites uh, would turn into a granite and they'd have muscovite and a lot more quartz and potassium feldspar and some plagioclase also. So I think that's it for the Bones Reaction Series. And then uh, for the next couple of lectures, we'll look at some other phase diagrams.